Well, moving back now here onto Parliament Hill and what happened today politically, well, we've got two people to join us uh, who always have a rather unique take on these things. Jason <laughs> Kenney, the Minister of Immigration, and Dominic LeBlanc, Liberal member from New Brunswick. Uh, let me start off, I, we were going to play a little bit of question period, but before we do that, I want to start with you and then uh, on two different topics. Uh, Janet Napolitano said last night, I don't know if you heard the clip or not, but it was, uh, we have the tape on the show, and she says that the real threat from Canada is Canada's immigration policy. And her quote was, you, meaning Canada, let in people into your country that we wouldn't let into our country. Now, you're the guy at the top of the pyramid on this one. How do you react? That's absolutely wrong. You know, we ever since, uh, and before 9-11, Canada has cooperated with the United States on issues of continental security, including as it relates to immigration. As the Prime Minister said when President Obama was here, we view any threat to the United States as a threat to Canada. And uh, I can tell you our government has increased uh, resources to uh, ensure that, that our security interests are protected when it, when it comes to those who are visiting, uh, t visiting Canada. I find it a bit hard to swallow coming from the United States. Uh, I was being criticized recently, or our, our government was, because we made a decision that a, a, a self-admitted uh, financier of the Hamas terrorist organization couldn't come to Canada, but he was allowed in the United States. So, uh, you know, I think if we actually look at the American record on these issues, um, they should uh, take care of their um, they should take care of their own problems uh, before being uh, uh, unreasonably critical of other countries. It hasn't really been a stellar week for the Americans, especially the Department of Homeland Security in dealing with Canadian affairs. I mean, first you had the 9-11 comments of uh, a couple of days ago in an interview, and now these comments saying, well, the immigration system here is no good, and that's why they have to keep the border. Uh, start. I mean, it strikes a lot of Canadians. I think that there was this expectation under the Obama administration that things were going to be great for Canada, that things were going to improve. Uh, Dom, are you seeing that happening yet? I mean, in this area, it seems to be headed the other way. Yeah, I'm, I'm very worried, Tom. I mean, the, the Secretary of Homeland Security's uh, comments to me say that Mr. Harper's government hasn't been effective in getting the message across with that important department of the United States government. That in fact, as Jason said, our immigration screening process is very effective. Uh, we have uh, taken responsibilities as a country before 2001 and both governments, both parties since they've been in government since 2001 have worked cooperatively with the American administration. So I don't like to agree with Jason, I certainly don't want to make it a habit, it would shock your viewers. Um, but Tom, he's right in terms of, of the immigration system here. Uh, where I think that Jason should worry is his colleagues in cabinet's effectiveness, Minister Van Loan for example, uh, the secretary's counterpart in Canada obviously hasn't found her phone number or been able no, to convince met. her. That's not fair. And, and you know what? I think they've, they've established a constructive relationship. I think some of her comments have been torqued a little bit or taken slightly out of context. But we've always, let's face it, we've always had this challenge in the United States. Uh, they, there's a tendency in Washington to focus on the southern border, and many people, particularly coming from southern states like Arizona. Uh, don't have a full appreciation of the interconnectedness along the northern border. And there's a process of education going on. We heard Ambassador Wilson's very strong response uh, to this interview. And we will continue to properly inform our American friends about how very seriously we but, take our, our shared security. But here to me is the issue. I mean, the 9-11 comment could have just been, you know, uh, a little bit of ignorance. It was an urban myth and maybe she caught on to it because remember Hillary Clinton used to say that. But this one saying that our immigration system poses a clear and present danger. Now, I'm, that's not her quote, but that's the effect of what she was saying. Clear and present danger to the United States. Which they, It's not that she got it wrong, it's that she believes this. And that if she believes that there's a whole department of the U.S. government that believes this, and policy is being made on that. So it's not a, it's not a, something she misspoke about. Well, uh, Tom, I got to you. Uh, as I said, we, we, this is not a new phenomenon in, in yeah. Washington. Uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've met very senior uh, Congress people who didn't even know that Canada was the number one trading partner of the United States or the number one energy supplier, didn't know the, the length of the border. This is a constant challenge and we, you know, we were just ridiculed recently for hiring two top former White House press secretaries to help us communicate better in Washington. Every government, regardless of the stripe in Canada, has to assert our national interest and it's a challenge to get it pay, paid attention to. Just last week though, Janet Napolitano's number two deputy secretary was, was here in Ottawa, met with her counterparts. We had a chance to explain our very robust security procedure, procedures with respect to immigration and visas. And I think we're on a practical level actually making progress. 
Uh, Dominic, I just want to switch gears for a second because, of course, the big story around here today is the release of Bob Fowler and Louis Gay, and you know, we're all delighted for that. Uh, I must ask you, though, because you uh, came out uh, publicly after having spoken to uh, Bob Fowler's family and said publicly what they were thinking, and I understand that the government was a little bit miffed at you for doing that. Did you have the clearance of the Fowler family to say what you said? Uh, all I said, uh, Tom, was that the Fowler family, from my discussions with them, were very, very grateful for the terrific work that the government's done, that they were anxious to have a formal confirmation by Canadian authorities following the process that it's appropriate for them to follow. Um, so uh, there's no reason for anybody to be miffed. In fact, that people should be celebrating what we hope will be confirmed shortly is what the Malian officials have announced. Uh, is that uh, Mr. Fowler may in fact have been released uh, and on his way to, uh, to safety. So the Fowler family, from my discussions with them, uh, is grateful both for the work that was done in Africa and in Ottawa and looks forward to a very happy, um, a very happy reunion, hopefully very soon. So I, I, I just had to clear that up with you. I know everybody agrees that this is a great moment if in fact uh, these two uh, diplomats of ours are, are well and free and, and soon to be back with their families. All right, a little bit of politics now. I want to play you the highlight, what we call the highlight of question period today, and I'll get you guys to respond to it. Let's take a listen to that. Does the Prime Minister understand that the assumptions of his January budget no longer hold? Will he revise his own projections in respect of revenue and deficits, and will he bring forward additional measures to help the vulnerable and working Canadians? Mr. Speaker, as you know, we will uh, constantly analyze the situation and take whatever measures are necessary. But as the IMF and others have said, we are taking the appropriate course of action. Now, I know, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the Liberal Party, the kind of additional measures he wants or re increases in taxes. And Mr. Speaker, that's not what we're going to do. This is a Prime Minister who spent us into the red in the good times. It's a Prime Minister who slapped a 31.5% tax on income trusts. Shame. Shame. This is a Prime Minister who's going to leave us with the biggest deficit in Canadian history, Shame. and he's giving me a lecture on economics. Shame. The fact is this, virtually every country in the world is running a deficit, and the reason we are running a deficit is to take money that the private sector is not using and to make sure it is employed for the benefit of people who are losing their jobs. Mr. Speaker, that's why we have surpluses in good times, so that we can act when times are tough, and none of that. There is no excuse for an agenda to raise taxes. Hey! On little sample of what happened in question period today. Uh, I've been saying this for some time, so I'm sounding like a one-note interviewer, but <laughs> it sounds like this is a one-note one parliament. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's almost the same question every day. It's almost the same answer every day. Are we in trench warfare like a World War One? We're 50 yards apart, and 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 we've got two immovable political elements going on here. I don't I don't think so. You know, we've got uh, the normal political debate you would expect at this time. Um, the reality, look, Mr. Native is going to is going to use the only argument he has to avert, divert attention away from the fact that a week ago he was talking about a Liberal government raising taxes. Now that's, you know, that's fine, he can, that's a legitimate policy option, but you know, he should just be for, forthcoming with Canadians. Which taxes, by how much, and who are they going to hit? We don't think that's the right economic policy during a recession to raise taxes. We're actually reducing taxes, and that's a fair debate to have. Dominic? Yeah, I mean, they may be reducing taxes now after they raise them at the beginning of their mandate, but the real issue, Tom, is not who is allegedly going to raise taxes or the conservative retread of oh my god look at the opposition they have these secret tax plans when the conservatives are cornered because they have no policy for example to help the unemployed because hundreds of thousands of people can't get access to employment insurance because we have the worst job loss record in Canadian history the biggest deficit in Canadian history what do they do instead of helping those people with real answers to their concerns they point the finger at the opposition over and over again with these imagined boogeyman well, of taxes. He's the one who said he was going to raise taxes. But it's a good trick you're on, Tom. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. uh, on that note, I can't go anywhere else except to say thank you very much, <laughs> Dominic LeBlanc. Jason Kenny, I appreciate you being here. Thank Power, you. Power Play continues right after this.